Hello everyone and welcome! This is No Way Out! This is the finale to this series of Universe, a great series for this company as well. We are here in Miami for what will be one insane evening of action. Three world title matches for you here tonight, atop of many goodbyes to other people as well. Coming up for us here tonight, Alan Gobernable, Tetsuya Naito takes on Johnny Champion himself for the ECW Championship. And on top of that as well, it's notice that the title matches end there. Finn Balor will challenge the Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada, for the WWE Championship. These two men have been through everyone on SmackDown. They haven't been through one another. Then we get to our main event of the evening. Is it finally time for that man on the left to be champion once again? Is it finally time for Kyle O'Reilly at the event that has plagued him for so many years to right all the wrongs of the past and become World Heavyweight Champion? We will find out all those answers and more, but tonight we kick things off hot. We kick things off with one of the biggest matches heading into this event as a whole. It is for the Raw Women's Championship. It is Ronda Rousey and Rosemary challenging Tessa Blanchett. Rousey and Rosemary returned on the same evening of action. And what an evening it was for the Raw Women's Division where it skyrocketed them to, without a doubt in my mind, the division to beat around in terms of women's divisions. Smackdown Live currently, I don't think, can really hold a candle to what is going on in the Raw Women's Division. Ronda Rousey and Rosemary made a beeline right for Tessa Blanchard, but the problem for those two women has been apparent since the very start. Since our very beginning of our build towards this triple threat match, Ronda Rousey and Rosemary simply cannot they can't stop fighting one another. <laughs> That's the reality of it. They just cannot. Every time they see each other, they have to fight. And Tessa Blanchard has said that is going to be her advantage. That is what is going to lead her to victory here this evening. Not just being, in her eyes, the greatest women's wrestler of all time, but realizing the disadvantage that these two women are presenting to one another, swooping in and leaving with the Raw Women's Championship. What a match we have to get us going here. We know it's going to be chaotic. We know that the fact there's no disqualifications is going to be followed to quite a T. And we know that this woman will not have much of a positive reception to her whatsoever. The first ever Miss Money in the Bank. And with it, she became the Raw Women's Champion, as she has been now for a number of months. Tessa Blanchard and Trifecta trying to get their stranglehold on the Raw Women's Division. It's been hard to do that with the return of Rosemary and Ronda Rousey. Can she prove her point, though? Here tonight, she believes she's the greatest women's wrestler of all time. She believes there's no one who holds a candle to her in that ring. Can she prove that that is right? Can she prove that she is telling the truth, really? Or is it all just more words, more blatant talk from Tessa Blanchard? But the reality is that whenever Blanchard talks about something, she has a frequency for it to be alarmingly true. Blanchard beat Rousey to win the Raw Miss title when she cashed in that briefcase. She also beat Rousey at SummerSlam and put her on the injury shelf for a little while. Rosemary, you know, I talked about Kyle O'Reilly having bad luck at this event. It was here a year ago where Rosemary lost her Raw Women's Championship. And I wonder how much that resides within the hive mind of Rosemary. We are ready to go here this evening. Three of the greatest women's wrestlers in the planet today for the Raw Women's title. And Tessa Blanchard immediately getting out of trouble, getting out of the ring, and getting out of the way of these two women. And Rosemary 
wasting little time. She'll go right after Ronda Rousey. Tessa Blanchard knew it. She knew they couldn't stay away from one another. She knew they couldn't go without fighting one another for just a few moments. And that is exactly what has happened here. Rousey and Rosemary breaking down right away. Blanchard just standing on the outside right now and staying to herself because she knows these two women are far too more interested in fighting with one another. Blanchard though with a bat in hand comes in and takes it all to Rosemary. Back between the eyes and the center on the Rousey. No! Rousey takes the bat from her hand and sends it across the chest of Tessa Blanchard. Well, it didn't take long for the no disqualification rules to be put into apparent effect here. And look out now. The champion is in a big bit of trouble. Rosemary and Ronda Rousey may hate each other, but even they can work together to take apart Tessa Blanchard. Champ getting out on the apron and Rosemary going right back after Rousey. Out here though, Blanchard with Bailey any time to recover on the apron. Rosemary bringing her back into the ring. Rosemary the longest reigning women's champion in the history of this universe. And by quite a long way as well. Tessa Blanchard would certainly love to break that record in this reign. But I would be, in some ways, I would be surprised if she left here tonight with that Raw Women's title given not only the caliber of talent she's up against, but the reality is these two women now are fairly psychotic as well, and they'll do anything for victory. Rousey on the outside here, it's Rosemary and Blanchard in the ring. Rosemary got a, got a one count there on the champion. Oh, Larry in the back of the head there by Blanchard. Rousey comes back in the ring, has the leg here. Twisting back suplex takes Tessa Blanchard down. Rosemary up to her feet and right into the path of Ronda Rousey. Rosemary getting out of the ring now. And that'll leave Rousey and Blanchard hand to hand with one another just how they were at SummerSlam. And look out here, the count is coming in thick and fast between these two women. Snap me and a big kick in the back as well. From Tessa Blanchard, who nails the reverse STO, driving Ronda Rousey face first into the mat. In comes Rosemary, though, back in the ring with a snap suplex. No chance to breathe for any woman in this matchup. They are just showing up and just taking apart their opponents the moment they get back in the ring. Cover made there by Rosemary, but the referee there making the call to say that Tessa Blanchard's foot was in the ropes. Meanwhile, Rosemary going after Rousey, not happening. Rosemary set up over and outside. Right there and then. Blanchard coming in from behind as Ronda Rousey's sights were too centrist, were too, were too focused onto Rosemary. And now it's Blanchard coming in with the bat. Using the bat over and over there. And now bringing out a sledgehammer. Tessa Blanchard the one to go after the weapons here this evening. Sledgehammer into the gut of Rousey. Brutal sledgehammer shot there. Rosemary going after Rousey a little more. And then in the small of the back. Never turn your back on Tessa Blanchard. Oh, Rousey though, fighting back here. Great counter made by Rousey. Look out now. Brings her down into the mat there. Leg is hooked. Rosemary on the outside. Chance for Rousey to become a two-time Raw Women's Champion. But nothing happening there. Blanchard getting the shoulder up alarmingly early. Big overhand right. Look at these shots now. Ronda Rousey coming in with those strikes that made her famous. Hard forearm shot takes Blanchard down, but Rosemary in. Russian leg sweep and Rousey goes back down. Blanchard perhaps smartly rolling out of the ring for just a few moments and allowing these two women to go and boil themselves up for war once again with one another. Off the ropes. Oh, big shot of tackle there, and Rosemary's taken off her feet. Blanchard, once again, just watching on the outside, minding her own business. Back in the ring she comes now, though. Ronda Rousey trying to put the boots on to, Blanch on to Ro uh, Rosemary. But Blanchard coming back here and trying to get some shots on Rousey. Rousey nailed. Blanchard in the mat. Referee, I think, was taken up by Blanchard just a few moments ago, and he's having some hard time recovering as well. 
We knew his, his work was going to be a busy one here tonight and in this contest as well, but really showing the signs of war already. Oh, a big drop kick from Rosemary now. Bringing her up to her feet. What is Rosemary going to do here? Michinoku, drive her onto the bat. The butt end of the bat there. Came Ronda Rousey's back. Not a nice landing at all. Blanchard up to her feet. Forearm shot in the face there. Oh, and a slap in the face of Rosemary. No respect to the queen of the hive at all there. Blanchard now with a steel chair. Adding it into the ring. And into the ribs of Ronda Rousey. Again, Rousey moves out of the way. Oh, she catches the chair and sends it into the face of Tessa Blanchard. And now she'll put her up on her shoulders. Rousey in here. Piper's pit onto the bat. Rosemary's down with one, two, two and a half. Blanchard gets the shoulders up in time. Just as Rosemary was getting up to her feet there, Ronda Rousey could have had it. Rousey looking for the armbar. Didn't take into account that Rosemary was back in the ring as she takes out Blanchard. And then they go right back after one another. Fires carry counter onto the sledgehammer there. Ronda Rousey sees the opening. And she's gonna look to put it away. Armbar! Armbar from Rousey! Armbar locked in on Rosemary! Is this all she wrote? Is this Raw Women's Championship number two for Ronda Rousey? She has it locked in and Blanchard coming in to break things up! Blanchard making the save! Rosemary fighting her way out as well! Rosemary now! Red Wedding to Rousey! Red Wedding! Cover's made! The count is made! One, two... Oh, Blanchard making the save in the nick of time! Needed more than ever right then and there to make the save! And Blanchard did just that! Blanchard has Rosemary now! Look out! Hammerlock DDT! Rosemary's down! Rousey is down! Blanchard on her feet and looking to end it on Rousey Magnum Magnum on Rousey Rosemary's not moving Tessa Blanchard has retained the Raw Women's title up against Two of the best women's wrestlers in the world, Tessa Blanchard does it. If she was up against two of the best and she won it, does that make her the very best at this point? Does that make her number one? Tessa Blanchard does it. She beats Rosemary. She beats Ronda Rousey. Trifecta reigns supreme again. And who the hell? It's going to stop them. What a way to get us going here at No Way Out. The action only keeps on going and the no disqualification rules will keep on running as well. Coming up next, it is the swan song for Chris Jericho. His final match against Neville. No disqualification rules apply. And in the midst of the British Empire civil war that's going on between Neville and Drew McIntyre, one final twist to the puzzle was added. If Neville wins, he will control the British Empire and Drew McIntyre won't raise a finger. If he loses, Neville must leave the company like Chris Jericho will be tonight. Neville knows he's being in some way screwed over here tonight by Drew McIntyre, but he said on ECW that his focus was only on Chris Jericho here tonight. His time will come to take care of McIntyre, but tonight it's about taking care of Jericho. We hear Jericho's warning as well on ECW. He said between now and no way out, he was going to a dark place. No idea. What that could have meant by Jericho, where well, the lights are blackened out. And that's absolutely not the normal theme. 
of Chris Jericho either. But the fans are on their feet because they know for the very last time, this legend of the industry is making his way out here tonight. And he's not the only one making his final entrance here tonight. Jericho though, he wanted this war. He wanted to go out taking apart Neville. He wanted revenge for having so much of his career cost. And he wasn't lying when he said he was gonna find a dark place within him. Chris Jericho, looking like he belongs in Stanley Kubrick's A Clockwork Orange. And Jericho is ready for a war tonight. This crowd not dying in their love and loyalty for Jericho. He said it on ECW. There would be no Y2J at No Way Out. There would just be Chris Jericho. And that is what we're seeing here tonight. Jericho making his way out. And is this that Judas side of Jericho. No disqualifications, no count outs. A war until the very end between Neville and Jericho. Chris Jericho's final stand, final match. Will it give him one last victory? Is he about to do Drew McIntyre? One massive solid. We are going to find out right here right now the bell rings and Jericho is in action for one last time and these two men ultimately not wanting to go and uh, no surprise really that they're going for this kind of style last time they shared a ring with one another Neville drove the head of Chris Jericho into a solid ring post and cost him three months of his career Three months of his career that Jericho seemed to know at that point was dwindling down. Big drop kick there from Neville as he goes to work now on Jericho, taking him off his feet for the first time in this contest. And Neville going right outside of the ring here. Oh, but he saw, oh, saw Jericho getting up to his feet and decided to take him apart before he went for the weapon. Now underneath the ring. Neville searching and grabbing a kendo stick here. Back in the ring he gets, and that was too easy for Jericho to counter. Jericho with a kendo stick on Neville now. Wailing away on him with it over and over there. And now it's Jericho's turn. Referee, of course, can't do anything but just count a pinfall or confirm a, a tap out. Oh no, Jericho. Not wasting any time and going for the heavy lumber. A table being brought into the ring here. This early on. So we got a table and a kendo stick in the ring already. What other plunder is going to be added here tonight? Neville setting it up right in the middle of the ring. Jericho counters him on the apron with a big forearm shot. Jericho now, go to the top rope. Here we go, went for a double axe handle, but no one was home. And Neville once again, retreating outside of the ring and going for the steel steps here. The kendo stick was a nice start, but they have just, they haven't even progressed to the heavy artillery. They've just gone straight for the bombardments. Jericho. Fighting back right here, right now, though. He may be a veteran, but he hasn't lost a spring in his step. Springboard drop kick there, and Neville hits hard on the outside. Look out here now, Jericho tearing apart the announce table. Y2J wants to leave with a symbol of war being shown. Here comes Neville, however. Double axe handing Jericho into that table. Look out now. Oh! Got first into it. He goes there not once, but twice. And a ring pull for Jericho to go into again, courtesy of Neville. He knows that experience one too many times. Neville now 
holding Jericho and sending him onto the top of that barricade. That's got to hurt Y2J, his body isn't able to recover and endure this much punishment like he could in the past. It hurts more now. And Jericho is feeling every last bump and bruise that he's taking in this contest as Neville has control and brings him back in the ring. Are we looking at the match that makes Neville the un unquestionable leader of the British Empire? Another steel chair making its way out here this evening. Jericho trying to get up to his feet. Neville, meanwhile, coming into the ring with a steel chair now. I don't think Jericho's seen it. Oh, and he never did. Back of the head, that chair shot came in. And Neville firmly in control here. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're going to come down on something. I just don't know what. Jericho in trouble. German superplex. Neville will go into the cover now. Looking to finish things off here. Yeah, it's a kick out of two from Y2J. But Neville not one to give up here. He's going straight to the top rope. He wants to end it. Red arrow. Red arrow from Neville. Oh no. Is this how Jericho's career is going to go out? It's locked in. Wings of Satin. Will he have to tap? Is Neville going to finish off Y2J? Is he going to make Y2J retire by admitting that Neville's the ruler of the British Empire by tapping out to the man he wanted to fight? Jericho rolling the clock back and fighting on in there. This is why he's a legend. This is why he will never quit. Jericho keeps going. Neville has to keep on fighting to finish him off. Second rope goes Neville now. He is all over Jericho here. He may have got out of the rings of Saturn. But how much fight is there still in Jericho? Well, he moves out of the way of the drop kick. Neville takes a seat in the corner and finds himself the victim of a brutality of chair shots. Oh, went for the chair shot across the head, but Neville counted it. Sends the chair into his face. Harakarana. Oh, no. Face first instead into the mat. Jericho now has him up on his shoulders. Look out. Oh, the back. The back of Jericho couldn't hang on in there. The back giving way briefly. And that gave Neville the window he needed to take advantage. Still steps into the gut. No, Jericho counters them. Oh, and Neville, inadvertent or not, the referee taking it again here this evening. Jericho takes the steps out of the hands of Neville and comes in with a forearm shot. Bringing him up to his feet here. Makes no difference if the referee is conscious or not. There's no DQs in this matchup. And I think what we could see in the ring makes that pretty evident. But it's Neville in control again here. Steele steps in hand once more. Jericho moves out of the way again, thankfully for his own sake, but not that time. Maybe gasping for breath and he just couldn't find it in him to dodge those steps. But Jericho's up to his feet and he keeps on striking. Into the table goes Neville. And look out, Jericho. Sending him into it, and through it! Suplex through the table! Is it so long to Neville as well? The shoulders are up in time! So not quite yet. But Jericho knows, he can sense this matchup could be over. Not if Neville has anything to say about it, though. Neville on the top rope here. Once again, Haraka Vana. On to Jericho. And he'll go up high again here. He'll go to the top rope once more. Will he look for the red arrow again? Look out, not this time. Went for a moonsault. Jericho had it well scouted. And this crowd 
cheering on Jericho with every last fibre of their being, knowing that if this is Jericho's last stand, he's going out with a fight. Power bomb onto the steps from Y2J. And what a power bomb it was as well. Neville trying to get up to his feet. Jericho refusing him the chance to stand. And now, look out! Lion sock from Jericho! And he can sense that it's about to end. Code breaker! If Jericho was going out, he was playing all of the greatest hits. Lion Salt, Code Breaker, and he'll take him to the middle of the ring for the Lion Tamer. Lion Tamer locked in. Is Jericho going to do it? There's nowhere for never to go. Is he going to have to tap? Is he going to have to tap? Will it be sweet revenge? Neville, Neville taps. Neville taps out. Jericho does it. In his final breath, in his final actions, Jericho gets revenge. Jericho leaves a winner. And Neville leaves with him. Thank you for everything, Chris Jericho. What a swan song for Y2J. Man, oh man, that just happened. Jericho wins. Neville, out of here. What is that going to do to the British Empire? Is it now free reign for the Scottish psychopath to take charge? We will find out, I imagine, when we get to ECW. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for our second title bout of the evening. And hopefully, it'll be a title bout where it will be the case where some weapons will chill out for a little bit. It is time for the WWE Tag Team titles to be up for grabs here. It is time for the Dangerous Alliance to challenge for the Tag Team titles against the Good Brothers. So we'll see how that one's going to go here. Sheamus on Bobby Lashley became the number one contenders after defeating the Gorillas of Destiny on SmackDown Live. And they have had their run in already with the Good Brothers of Gallows and Anderson. We saw it uh, two weeks ago now, I believe, on SmackDown Live when backstage on SmackDown Live a fight broke out between both sides in the backstage area. We had Anderson and Sheamus, I believe it was in the parking lot, and then Gallows and Lashley in catering. What a night it is going to be for the Dangerous Alliance, though, and certainly for Paul Heyman, because not only here tonight are these two men challenging for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, but on top of that, of course, and it is coming up next, actually, Bobby Fish will wrestle CM Punk in Punk's final matchup as well. Said at the top of the evening, a lot of goodbyes are being said here tonight. We've already said goodbye to two, and we're going to be saying goodbye to three in just a few moments' time once this match is over. And we head into that big grudge match between Bobby Fish and CM Punk. But right now, it is time for Lashley and Sheamus to go to work here. Paul Heyman leading them out here. So Heyman, busy night for him, no doubt, but no way out synonymous with success for the Dangerous Alliance and Paul Heyman as well it was this uh, pay-per-view a number of years ago where Paul Heyman convinced Bobby Fish to turn on Kyle O'Reilly and the rest is history speaking of history here are the history making tag team champions themselves five time tag team champions no one can come close to that record other than the Good Brothers who hold that record. They won the tag team titles from the Gorillas of Destiny just before SummerSlam and now tonight they look to defend them 
year against the Dangerous Alliance. They helped end the originals at Fastlane with Finn Balor. And now tonight, they have their sights focused on cementing themselves once again as the greatest tag team of all time. The Good Brothers. Gallows and Anderson. Never a bad word I gotta say about these two guys. And let's see what'll happen here. Sheamus and Lashley are gonna bring nothing but the power, but can the speed and the kind of unexpected technical wisdom of Carl Anderson be enough to counter the power game? And of course, if it's going a bit backwards for the Good Brothers, if they need power in the match, well, you got a seven foot, 300 pound brute by the name of Luke Gallows who can add some power into the contest, I believe. So they stand the challengers. Black and red matching. Lashley and Sheamus have worked incredibly well together since Lashley joined the Dangerous Alliance just after WrestleMania. In their first instance of challenging for the SmackDown Tag Team titles, can they make the Good Brothers say goodbye to title reign number five? We are about to find out right here, right now. Gallows and Anderson have been in this position many a time before. Collectively, they have the most number of days held for the World Tag Team titles over on Monday Night Raw. I'm sure they'll be looking to make some headway towards the two longest reigning tag team title reigns with those belts held by the Gorillas of Destiny and the number one, the Shield of Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns. So here we go, it's going to be Sheamus starting things off with Luke Gallows. It's going to be power against power to get us going here. Bell rings and we are underway here for the, the WWE Tag Team titles. The only tag team title up for grabs here tonight, so let's see what will happen between these sides when things start to break down. Oh, that was like a side super kick there by Luke Gallows. who has a, a strong start against Sheamus early on. Look at that right away. Tag incoming, and Carl Anderson getting the tag in here. Look out, double flapjack. Good brother starting off hot. And Carl Anderson looking to pick up where things left off with Gallows in his small instance in the ring there. Look out. Oh, super kick in the gut there. Went for a super kick. Just missed it. Sheamus makes it pay. Cobra clutch. So flex. Right down on the, the head and the neck there. Brutal landing. No doubt about it. Look out here. Shoulder first into the ring pole. Goes Carl Anderson and Sheamus now going to work here. Drilling the knee into the face there for Carl Anderson to endure. Now momentum swinging back to the favor of the challengers who certainly have some innovative offense to break out of their own as Lashley's wit comes down across the head of Anderson and Sheamus brings him into the mat with that Samoan drop as well. Cover is made here. Lashley straight into a cover, looking to win the tag team titles. Not happening though. Sheamus getting into the counter two there because I think Gallows might have been looking to make the save but he entered the ring too late anyway. A big right hand. Big right hand there from Bobby Lashley. And the crowd not all that pleased here in Miami to hear, or to see rather, Lashley in control. Anderson though, coming up with the count this year. Good forearm shots. Look out now. Look at the strength of machine gun. Running power bomb. Incredible. But he was able to pull that one off. In the corner we go now. Luke Gallows tagged back in here. Big man back in. Double axe handle onto the small of the back there. Cover is made. Gallows looking to try and pull away Lashley right here, right now. Kick out is made at two. So let's see what will happen here. Bringing him up to his feet right now. Luke Harper trying to slam the big man, but Lashley coming back with some good hard shots there. Running shoulder charge from Lashley as well, and he brings him down off his feet. Ooh, nice fall on as well. Elbow on the top of the head. Look out though, Lashley spilled to the outside. And Gallo's getting fired up. Look at that. Heyman getting involved a little bit there. Demanding Lashley to get back up to his feet. It's been a long time since the Dangerous Alliance held any gold. And he wants some back. Matter of fact, the last time the Dangerous Alliance may have held gold. It might not be since Bobby Fish was WWE Champion. And the last time he held that crown was back at last April. So a long period of time there. Coming up about 20 months nearly. Tag made, the only comes to Carl Anderson right now. Oh! 
What a drop kick there. What elevation. Carl Anderson got on the drop kick to make that happen. Lashley, though, kicking out right away. Gallows had the defense of Sheamus covered and just sent him way up and over the top rope. Elbow across the face there by Carl Anderson right now. Sheamus down on the outside. Two on one advantage for the tag team champions right here. Can they capitalize on it in the fullest extent possible? Not happening there. Look out. Big time. Belly to belly. So black. Some Lashley takes Anderson down. Machine gun trying to get back up to his feet. Yeah, just trying to find his bearings, I think. Lashley, though, giving him no such joy or courtesy. Sends him in the corner. Tag is made here. In comes the Celtic Warrior. Back up on the apron. Double axe handle done on the arm there. Sheamus in from behind with a clothesline as well. Sheamus, a former tag team champion in his own right. Lashley looking to win his first tag team title. Gallows holding out the arm. He's desperate. He wants the tag in here. But, oh, Sheamus comes in and puts the stop to it. Anderson was about an inch away from making the leap there. And Sheamus just stopped him in his tracks. Anderson moves out of the way, however. Look at the strike of machine gun now. Death Valley driver on Sheamus. Hook in the outside leg. Has the cover made? Is it all she won't do? The shoulders are up in time there. Sheamus saving the dangerous alliance right then and there. Just saw the Luke Gallows wanted to tag back into this matchup. And he's got it now. Tag is made. In comes Luke Gallows here. Big boot from the big man as well. Massive big boot in the face there of... Sheamus, he's right back up to his feet after that throw chop uppercut however, Sheamus now counters Gallows and puts him in a precarious predicament, backing up into his own corner here, look out, tag is made now, Lashley comes in, look at this, trying to deny it, but oh, sent into the ropes with power, and then a double thrust kick into the gut as well for good measure, nice double team action there from the Dangerous Alliance, look out here, Lashley, oh, you already know what he's looking for, look at the strength for Bobby Lashley here, the almighty Lashley, with a stalling vertical suplex on Gallows, and it didn't look like he broke a sweat in the process of hitting it, talking down, to Luke Gallows here, up on the shoulders, oh, Gallows, he counters, DTs his way out of it, Great counter made there by Gallows. And the opening is there now to make the tag into Anderson once again. A lot of frequent tags coming from both sides. I think most notably, though, from the tag team champions. And that is a smart game plan. It's keeping them in it. It's keeping them fresh. And I think both sides are having a trouble with really controlling this matchup. Momentum seems to be going back and forth in this contest. No real side is having control here. Big forearm shot counter there by Lashley, and he will whip cord. Anderson in the turnbuckle with huge strength, and an overhead belly to belly when he didn't even need to duck under. Anderson sent into the turnbuckle, now the tag is made here. Sheamus, the legal man, once again, toning it down a bit with a double T moves there with a just a simple and effective double back elbow. Gallows wanted in, but he's not going to get it because Sheamus is all over machine gun right now. Big knee in the gut, and now just booting him a hole right into that chest of Carl Anderson. Oh, Anderson comes up with the counter there, though. Big left hand. Anderson sees the chairs. What a drop kick from Anderson. A signature move in his playbook. And it could be what leads to the opening. It could be what leads them defending the titles. Tag is made. Here we go. Mm, magic killer. Cover made here. Is it all she wrote on Sheamus? There's the count. Sheamus kicks out of the magic killer. Anderson had Lashley covered off. But Sheamus kicked out. The Celtic warrior. Fighting on and fighting right back here. White noise from Sheamus. White noise strikes him, but an instant. Luke Callow's in tremendous trouble now. Sheamus, bro kick, bro kick. He covers him, he covers him. Is it over? Oh, Anderson making the save. 
making the save at the crucial point. Referee, a casualty there in the grander scheme of things. Anderson making a last gasp save for his tag team partner and they are reign as tag team champions. But how much trouble are they in? How much trouble is Gallows in? Is there any fight in the big man? Yes, there is. He's still going here. Sheamus counters him though. That could have been a last gasp effort. Big boot takes him down there. Tag is made. Lashley comes back in now. Two chances to end this matchup. One from both sides in all fairness. Oh, big clothesline there by Lashley. The magic killer didn't end it. The bro kick didn't end it. And here comes Machine Gun. Carl Anderson hits the ring. And he's going right for Lashley. Anderson coming back here. Oh, the drop kick is counted. Look out. Belly to belly. Thrown across the ring. All the fight fades from him. Gallows is down on the outside. Anderson might be done for in the ring. Spear. Spear from Lashley. Two. And three, the Dangerous Alliance are the WWE Tag Team Champions. Anderson came in with a full head of steam. That was used against him. And with it, Lashley and Sheamus just became the Tag Team Champions. 1-0 for the Dangerous Alliance this evening. And finally, for Heyman and company, there is gold around their waist once again. Sheamus and Lashley, your new Tag Team Champions. Well, it's 1-0 here tonight for the Dangerous Alliance. Will it be 2-0? Will it be heartbreak for CM Punk in his final match against a long-standing rival in Bobby Fish? One last time, here we go, Fish and Punk. Well, it has been a wild night already. And now I would say, I think we have just started getting into the business end of things at No Way Out. Because after this, come our three world title matchups. But this match, as big as one of those world title matchups, if you had to ask me, the final match for the most successful world champion in the history of this universe, the highest number of accolades held, Five world titles from CM Punk. And he takes on the man who is synonymous, if you had to ask me, with a WWE Championship as well. 390 days with that title. No one has come close to that record. Bobby Fish, the second longest reigning champion in the history of this universe. Of course, he doesn't come close to the number one record. But that's not who we're talking about here tonight. Who we're talking about are Fish and Punk. Punk said that he was going to retire at Fastlane. He said after he lost to Okada, it was going to be his final match. But Fish jumped him in the parking lot at SmackDown Live after Fastlane. And after that, Punk felt that he had to stand up for himself. And if he was going to go out with one final stand, he was going to do it at No Way Out. And he was going to take on Bobby Fish. Heyman accepted on behalf of Fish. And the fight is on for here tonight. Fish got the one up with the use of a bat and a fish hook on the last episode of SmackDown Live. No bats can be used here tonight, but you can believe there's going to be a lot of hate in the building between these two men. The final time may be for that theme to strike. I think we know whose side Miami is on. The five-time world champion, CM Punk, has done it all around these parts. But for one last time, he makes his way out. A hero in Miami. He held the World Heavyweight Championship three times. He held the WWE Championship two times. He led the Shield. He gave us the likes of Dean Ambrose. Roman Reigns, and of course, Seth Rollins. CM Punk has done everything there is to do around these parts. But for one last time, he will look. Not to do it for pride, not to do it for his legacy, but to do it for his honor.
for himself, for CM Punk. And you better believe, every step of the way he goes, this Miami crowd is on his side. Bobby Fish is public enemy number one. And CM Punk is public hero number one. Jesus Christ, these gents. Talk about a rabbit arena as this matchup gets underway between Fish and Punk one last time. They've engaged in many a war over the past for the WWE Championship for just honor and rivalry with one another. And they do it one last time here this evening. It was Bobby Fish who defeated CM Punk to start his third and final reign, so far anyway, with that WWE Championship. And now we wait to see what will happen here tonight. There's no title on the line. There's probably not even a title opportunity at stake for Fish if he's victorious. But what there is for both men is that bragging rights, is that honor. And is in some ways the way they leave a bit of their legacy behind in this historic rivalry. For Punk, he's already shaped his legacy. He already goes down as a five-time world champion. He already goes down as being a forerunner for why we have seen, like I said, the talents like Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, and Seth Rollins. I mean, you could get away, you could take Ambrose and Reigns out of the equation and just say Seth Rollins, and that already leaves an immense legacy for Punk. But the, re the reality is, all three of those men have been world champions. And Punk gave us those men. He harnessed those men when he led the Shield to dominance on SmackDown Live for a number of months. And then he came back to do it by himself. And he did. He won another WWE Championship. He's had so many wars in the past with the likes of Kenny Omega, Brock Lesnar, and of course, Bobby Fish. And Fish. He's coming right back here with a big gut buster on Punk. Fish started this. Punk was going to make his way out and retire. But Fish forced Punk's hand one last time. And so here we are between these two men. Bobby Fish will still have a future to look forward to. Whatever happens, he can go on to SmackDown. Win or lose and continue on the way things were for Punk. This is it. It's do or die for him as he misses that big clothesline. This is going to be a long and grueling contest for both men. Make no mistake about it. This isn't going to be a match where they're just going to be able to walk into the ring and win it in the blink of an eye. Look out here. German suplex. And Bobby Fish slowing the pace of the match down a little bit now to his own style. Discus forearm there from the former WWE Champion taking Punk off his feet. Punk in a little bit of trouble right now. Look out here. Canners made there by CM Punk who catches Fish with a nice forearm in the face there. Off the ropes we go into a nice slam there from CM Punk. Look out here. He's got the control right now. Yuranagi slam takes Fish off his feet. Cover's going to be made here. Is it going to be victory for Punk? Not quite. Heyman with a close eye on it, eyeing up Punk every step of the way as well. Well, Heyman already has cause for celebration, but which match means more to him? The match involving the client who he has been with by the side through everything, all of the success of Bobby Fish, all those tag team titles being back in their custody. Big cross body there for second rope by CM Punk. Crowd up on their feet here for both men. Look out though, Heyman getting involved, causing a distraction. Fish sees it, he sweeps in, small package, small package, cover on Punk, not this way, oh! Punk thankfully gets the shoulder up in time there, kick out at two made by CM Punk. And Fish keeps on going, hard forearm shots, backing up, him up backing him up all the way to the corner. And now, just striking away into the chest there with those kicks. Punk though comes right back, and a drop toe hold takes Fish off his feet. Nicely done there by Punk. Look out here. 
Crossing the legs over. Mutalok, he's got all of it. He has got all of it here. It is locked in deep. Bobby Fish, well, he fell under the chin, but I think certainly Fish couldn't breathe through his nose. But anyway, Fish is able to escape. A submission expert in his own right. Oh, and a big flying forearm. Takes Punk off his feet right then and there. Big elbow as well. Punk retreating outside for a little bit of safety here just this moment. Or maybe playing possum and using it against Bobby Fish there to take a little bit of control. He sends him into the barricade. Not once but twice. Fish in trouble here. Oh, Russian leg sweep into the barricade as well. And into the ring we go again with CM Punk firmly in control right now. Punk calls Fish to his feet. But a springboard clothesline will connect, taking Fish off his feet there. Punk doing all that is necessary to try and finish this match off. Huge high kick, but look at Heyman. Heyman again. Heyman again getting in the face of Punk. And Fish coming in from behind. Tiger suplex taking full advantage. The cover is made. Is it all she brought for CM Punk's career? No, the kick out's at two. And thank God that it was as well. Bobby Fish, though, has used that Tiger suplex to retake control here. Look out now. Look out here on the apron. Neck breaker back into the ring there, using the ropes for added leverage. Heyman sliding in a steel chair into the ring as well. Trying to do everything to give Fish an advantage in this contest. Might not get one though. Punk gonna try and put him away. GTS! Go to sleep! Oh, but Heyman. Heyman distracting the ref. Come on, ref. Surely you can see the cover. Oh, Punk's got the chair in hand. Oh, but Heyman. Almost screaming there like a warthog at ringside. Telling the referee that Punk had a chair in hand. Punk never got to use it. And he never got to try and get the three count with that GTS either. Heyman coming to the aid once again here. How many times is he going to be allowed to do that in this matchup? DDT counter there. Fish retreats to the outside. But Punk is all over him right here, right now. Look out. Punk with a chair in hand here. Oh, but Fish using it against him. Using Punk's momentum against him to send it into his face. Referee can't call a DQ for that. On the shoulders. Oh, onto the announce table there. Onto the cover as well. Nasty landing for CM Punk as he sent back into the ring here. With Fish now in control. And Fish turns him over. He'll make the cover. Is he going to finish off Punk here? No, the shoulder's up just in time. Well, Punk isn't looking all that great right now. Fish is doing what he needs to finish him off here. Look out, Kanemade there by Punk, and he'll come back with forearms and chops, lighting up the chest here of Bobby Fish, chopping away, chopping the man down. On the top rope, here we go. Harakarana, no! Fish counted it. And oh! May have just whiffed on that elbow drop, missed by centimeters on Punk. But he's still in control. Solo and drop. Look at how fluid that was as well. Just seamlessly moving into it there. In the corner now, went for the knee in the gut. Punk countered him. Oh, went for a high kick there, but Fish was just out of legs reach. Canamade, big lariat from Punk. These two guys really trading with one another here. This time, he'll kick his head off. And again, again, Heyman gets involved. How much longer can the referee allow this to stand? Because every time, Fish is able to take advantage. <coughs> Bobby Fish turning the page around right there and then. Sleeping with the Fishes. The cover is made off of that spinning kick, but Punk kicks out at two. He's still going here. It isn't game over yet. Punk still alive, Fish still alive. And again, we go outside of the ring here. Fish on the apron. Is he gonna take 
Is he going to take a risk? He is. Look for the moonsault by Punk backstepping there. Just a few steps to get out of reach. Nothing fancy. Just simple and effective work. Punk calling him to his feet. He has him again. Surely this is the one. Go to sleep. GTS Connect. For God's sake, rep. Ignore Heyman. Ignore Heyman. There's a match going on in the ring. Punk covers. One, two. God damn it. Heyman once again. Opening the door for Fish to barely survive. How many times in this contest now has Heyman done that? This matchup could have been over off the first one. It's still going, but Punk is still fighting and Fish is still on the back foot. Yeah. Punk now, top rope, top rope. Oh, to Macho Man as he's going to look for that elbow drop, but no one's home. No one is home. Fish moved out of the way there. And a falcon arrow takes Punk off his feet. These two guys, absolute legends of their craft. Going back and forth with one another and putting on an expert match here at No Way Out. But is it going to be a match that CM Punk is going to leave with his arm raised in victory for the final time? That is the all too important question. Massive belly to belly by Fish. And he is calling Punk to his feet here. Yeah. And he comes charging in with a running knee into the chest. Got absolutely every last bit of it. But the kick out is at two. Paul Heyman kept this man in it. And because of that, Bobby Fish was able to capitalize. Bobby Fish was able to turn the momentum around. And CM Punk is in huge trouble. It's a fish hook! And he got all of it. Roundhouse kick in the head. Oh, he's not done. He is not done. He wants to finish the legacy of CM Punk with a definitive defeat. Fish hook! Again! Bobby Fish doesn't want just a victory. He wants bragging rights on his victory. Here we go. One, two, three. Bobby Fish defeats CM Punk. He went all out in his final stand. He had everything counted for with Bobby Fish, but not for Paul Heyman. Thank you, Punk. No time for rest here at No Way Out, though, ladies and gentlemen. The action keeps on going, and it's time for our world title matchup. Starting things off, the CW Championship up for grabs, Tetsuya Naito and Johnny Gargano. Here we go. Let's get into it. So two title matches thus far, one for one on title changes and title defenses. But this match certainly has a lot of animosity surrounding it. A couple of weeks ago, maybe two months ago, this man would have come out to a, a big build of cheers his way. Now I'm afraid the same can't be said for Alan Gobernable. Tetsuya Naito makes his way out with Hiromu Takahashi and since vengeance these two men have been on a war path for that title. Hiromu Takahashi and Naito realigning when they took care of Adam Cole at vengeance. And since then Cole has wanted his hands on Naito. He's tried and he's failed because every time he thinks he's got him Naito scampers for the hills. But Naito became the number one contender by pissing off another man as well. A monster to be frank in Braun Strowman. Naito has picked some big enemies in Adam Cole, Braun Strowman and Johnny Gargano on ECW. But Naito simply doesn't care. He's tranquilo about it all. And with that bat in his hand that he had on ECW, taking care of business, taking care of Braun Strowman 
and making sure that Adam Cole wasn't clear for competition either. In a handicap match against Johnny Gargano, they got themselves DQ'd on purpose. They put the beat down on him until Cole came to make the save. But after back-to-back -back weeks of being on the receiving end of Naito and Hiromu Takahashi's beatdown, is it all good? Is it all well and good? For one of the most beloved men in this entire company, the Johnny Champion himself. Gargano coming out as he always does to a massive reception wherever we go in the world, be it Florence, Italy, Mexico City, or right here in Miami. This place, this entire world, this entire business loves this man. He toppled Seth Rollins at SummerSlam. He beat Randy Orton at Vengeance. But now, he is the figurehead of ECW going up against its latest invading force in Naito and Takahashi. Naito has done all that he can, has done all that is possible to try and get under the skin of everyone in ECW. Be it Cole, be it Strowman, be it Gargano, he's done everything that he can do, everything that he can make happen in order to simply just piss everyone off for lack of a better term and I know Naito does, rile him, does drive himself off of that mentality but is it going to come back and bite him here tonight is he going to pay for it when we see these two men collide is Gargano going to take him out here or will Takahashi prove as a necessary addition at ringside once again. Naito's gonna have to work hard to get that low blow off that he's had off in recent weeks on his opponents. And Gargano, I gotta imagine, is as riled up as he was heading into SummerSlam in order to leave with the victory here this evening. Will that work against him or for him? We'll find out right here, right now. Katsuya Naito. And Johnny Gargano. Here we go with our first world title match of the evening. And look at this right away. Naito trying to say, trying to act like nothing's happened over these last few weeks. That everything can just be tranquilo for a reason. Oh, but Gargano doesn't see it that way. Gargano going right for Naito here. And swinging away at him as soon as possible. Naito coming back with some shots of his own here. Gargano though, swinging back. Here we go. These two men skipping out the feeling out process because another again he side has a desire to pull that off. Rolling wheel kick there from Naito though, takes him off his feet. Naito has the early round game here over uh, Johnny Gargano. Look out here on the second rope. Spinning reverse DDT. And we'll go into an early cover as well, but Gargano will get the shoulder up at one. Naito was here last year competing for the ECW Championship. Took on Seth Rollins and he was beaten by him in that evening. And a lot has changed in a year. Well, certainly a lot has changed for Tetsuya Naito as well in that time. That's even what a difference a year makes. It's what a difference six to eight weeks makes more than anything else which you know good driving out by Gargano plants him into the back covers made here by Johnny Wrestling has he done enough to retain the title no Naito gets the shoulder up at two Takahashi just watching on at ringside right now hopefully this is the last time we'll see a man standing at ringside our next two world title matches should just be straight one-on-one -on -one contest fingers crossed that that is the case cover made here by Gargano looking to put him away once again off that rolling cutter but there is only a two count Takahashi watching closely indeed as the cover was made simple but effective DDT from Gargano covering again here seems as if Gargano wants to try and put this match away as soon as possible more than anything else just going for cover after cover as soon as possible right now. Gargano with some big left in the turnbuckle there. And then driving Naito's head face first into the turnbuckle for good measure. 
the top rope he goes now. Gargano coming in. Double foot stomp, no one home. And Naito with a suplex in retaliation. Naito now has the armor. Gargano wearing it down here. As he looking to maybe try and take away the Gargano escape here. Is he just looking to target a limb? Whatever the case may be, Gargano getting right back up to his feet here in a nice fashion. And a big back elbow takes Naito away from him. And Naito comes back with a thunderous clothesline. And I wonder, is that because of Gargano's recent beatdowns? He's withstood at the hands of LIJ that he wasn't able to recover as quick as he would have liked. But on the outside, he was certainly quick to recover. Into the barricade. No, not quite. For Naito. But Gargano has control outside of the ring here. And this is not good news for Tetsuya Naito who is sent head first with a funk into that ring post. Look out now, has him up on his arms and slams him down on the apron. Thank you very much, Johnny Gargano. Back in the ring will go here. Gargano now has control over his challenger and is looking to keep it that way. Suplex driver from Gargano. Cover is made for the first time, I believe, in this matchup. Takahashi is getting involved. And not a surprise at all to me either. But that is the case. Look out here. Gargano calling Naito to his feet. And a big neck breaker comes in there to take him off them. Cover is made from Gargano here. Looking to put him away. Cover is made. Kick out of two. Nice blockbuster from the second rope there from Gargano. Can't capitalize. Sent on splash. Takes the fight out from him there. Naito in from behind. Giant suplex on Gargano now. Folding him up like an accordion in the process. Gargano. Just when he seemed to have found an opening. Naito quick as a cat to take it away from him as well. Look at this now. Sending the throat into those ropes. And pushing him away from them as well. What else is Naito going to do here? Look out. Triangle armbar locked in. Triangle armbar locked in. Not a choke. He hasn't got the, the legs underneath the, the chin there. But he is wrenching that arm. Trying to wrench it straight and forward. To the extent where Gargano will either have to tap out or his arm's going to snap. Maybe this is why he was looking to, to target the arm earlier on. But Gargano is a fighter. Never a quitter. Roll through there. Oh, rolling kick there in the side of the head from Gargano. Naito simply didn't have it red. In the corner we go now. Look out here. Gargano has Naito right where he doesn't want to be as a super kick connects. And Gargano will cover. Looking to have retained the title with it. Naito kicks at it too. Gargano. Still seems as composed as possible right now. And he's going to look to end things here. He's going to look for the Goat Slayer. Oh, he looked for it, but Naito knew it was incoming. And he came up with a necessary counter to it. Look out now. Oh, side drop, brain buster from Naito. Right on his head. He makes the cover. Is it enough to win the title? It's a kick out of two from Tetsuya Naito instead. Gargano slow up to his feet here. Naito just toying with him now. And Naito, he's looking to end it here. He's looking for it. But Gargano had it scouted and had it countered from behind. Oh, back suplex toss. And now he'll climb himself to the top rope here. Right in front of Hiromu. Big frog splash from Gargano. Cover is made. Great aerial shot. And it's only enough for two. Naito raising up the far shoulder. Just in front of the referee for him to see it. Close but not quite. But Gargano staying on the focus point. Super kick. Oh, Naito moved out of the way just in time. And an atomic drop for Gargano. Will take him off his feet. Look at this now. The viciousness from Naito in that moment. Uh, both these guys doing everything in their power to become ECW champion here, but only one man is going to lift that trophy. Who will it be? Gargano counters. Big slingshot. Spear takes him down. 
Match really picking up over the last minute or so. Just high action pace now. These two guys raising one another up and up and up a pedestal. Here we go, Gargano on the outside. Tukbe's back in the ring there. To the top rope, he's going to look to go again. But look at how much slower Gargano is to get up there than just a few moments ago. The fight clearly having an impact on Gargano. And that's why he misses with that double foot stop again. And Naito in again, dumping him down on his head. And again, Naito goes after that arm, a reverse triangle armbar now. Has the legs wrapped around the, the arms and the chest there. But Gargano is always able to escape. Not only is he able to escape, but he's able to fight back right here, right now. Look at Lordart! I don't know how Gargano does it, just that he does. Massive lawn dot from Gargano, and he sees the ending in front of him. He sees the chance for victory. He'll knee him in the gut. Here we go. Goat Slayer from Gargano, and that could be all she wrote. Knight do did everything to piss off Gargano and co. Gargano could be about to get sweet retribution. Wait a minute, Takahashi grabbed the chair. Oh no! Takahashi with a chair shot to the referee. Gargano taking the chair out of Takahashi's hands. Naito rolling out of harm's way. The referee down and out. Yeah, Takahashi taking out of business. Wait a minute. Are you kidding me? It's evil and Sonata. Are you goddamn kidding me? This was a grand scheme all along. The ref is out. He doesn't see a damn thing going on. Sonata and Evil jumping into the ring. Surely this can't be allowed to happen, but there's no one to stop it. Everything is evil. Sonata goes to the top rope. And Sonata in position here. Moonsault and Gargano from the final NXT Tag Team Champions. Oh, this, this is horrific. Everyone getting back in the ring, but everyone's none the wiser. Certainly the ref. Takahashi and Knight are in position. They knew this was happening all along. Destino from Naito. This was a game plan. This was a setup. They knew it. When the referee was taken out, they sprung to action. Naito hooks the leg of Gargano. And Tatsuya Naito is ECW champion. There are questions that need to be answered, but the result has to stand. The band is back together, and Naito is champion. Well, hopefully right now we're gonna see a complete polar opposite to that match. We're gonna be seeing a match of respect between two great athletes on SmackDown. It is Finn Balor and Kazuchika Okada for the WWE Championships, up next. Folks, I really don't know what to make of what we just saw. I really don't, I, I don't know what to make of what we just saw. I, I, know, I knew things had changed within Naito and Takahashi, but I didn't know they had gone that extreme. No, no, we're going to need to be some answers for that one. Oh, that's going to be difficult to shake out of the head. But right now, hopefully, a great title match will help us out here with getting it out of our system. It is Finn Balor and Kazuchika Okada here tonight for the WWE title. Balor challenged Okada after fast lane to a WWE title match. And Okada, quick as a whippet, is fine to accept the challenge and put himself out there for the match itself. The title match was signed pretty much right then and there between Balor and Okada for the WWE title. And there was a little bit of a, a cocky nature, shall we say, from um, Kazuchika Okada on SmackDown Live. Something we haven't really seen from the, the Rainmaker in that regard. Okada saying to Balor that 
You're just saying what everyone has said since I won the title, that you're going to beat me, that you're going to be able to do it. And the reality is everyone who's tried has failed. And Bala didn't really have much of a response to that. The card is simply saying, when I beat you, I have a surprise to unveil, whatever that surprise was. And uh, Bala's response was simple. Simple and effective, really, and it was just, if you beat me, which is definitely a good question to ask. Right now, though, we're about to find out what's going to happen here between these two men. Bala and Okada, they may well have respect for one another, but certainly some cheap words have been allowed to fly between the pair of them. And it's all going to come to a head here in Miami when they clash for the WWE Championship. No way out, not a kind venue to Kazuchika Okada. He's never won here before, as far as I'm aware. Certainly last year he didn't either, when he was defeated by Shinsuke Nakamura. And what began, really, the downfall for Okada. A year later, he's back on top of the world. He's back on top of SmackDown. He's back as WWE Champion. And is there going to be any chance of stopping him here tonight? We will find out as these two men are going to lock horns with one another. Okada is ready and rearing to go for this one. Always up for a fight. Always up for a grueling title match because he loves it like nothing else. And the response to Okada as well. Quite strong here in Miami despite what he may have said at SmackDown Live to Finn Balor. There's no getting away from the fact that everyone knows that one of the greatest wrestlers in the world today is making his way out. And you just have to appreciate and embrace what Kazuchika Okada brings every time he comes out here. Is it going to be another classic Okada style match? Is it going to be a match where we're going to be seeing these guys kind of starting slow, building and building and building and then just building to an explosive ending? Or is it going to have to be a different style of match that Okada's going to have to bring against Bala? We are about to find out. Think about it though, for the first time since Backlash really, this is before Backlash even. It's the first time that Finn Balor isn't fighting a member of the Originals. Or isn't involved with a member of the Originals for most of the time. It is just Balor and Okada in the ring for the title. No outside interference, no shenanigans, and certainly, I hope, no underhanded tactics. We are about to find out right here, right now. What is going to take place? That is the title that is up for grabs. Two new champions crowned this evening. One title changing hands. But who will leave with the WWE Championship around their waist and their arm raised firmly as the winner? It's been a long time since this man was a world champion. Matter of fact, the last time he held a world title was at this uh, very venue. That is, of course, the challenger in Finn Balor, but the champion is cool as common. As composed as ever, he head into this night knowing that he needs to win once again. And everyone wants to be the champion, but only one man can be the champion. And for the last seven months, it has been Kazuchika Okada. Will it still be Okada, though? At the end of this match, we are about to find out between these two men. And what a match it is going to be as well. Strap yourselves in, get yourself ready. This isn't going to be a five-minute sprint to the finish. These guys are definitely going to treat it like a marathon. Finn Balor. Kazuchika Okada for the WWE Championship. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are underway. Certainly a section of the crowd here on the side of uh, Finn Balor cheering for him early on as these two men for the first time tonight you get to see a Colin Elbow tie-up. How nice is that? Let's see what will happen here. Bala comes up with the count, descending. Okada down to the match here. He's got him locked in an effective Fujiwara armbar position here. Just working them over right now. Like I said, slow start from both men. They know they can't go all out right away. Knees down on the arm there by Finn Bala. But Okada will just kind of slip his way out there. Nicely done indeed. Colin Elbow tie-up once again. Side headlock now from... Finn Bala with a side headlock takeover there on Kazuchika Okada here. 
It's Bale who has control on the mat de Leon. Maybe I spoke too soon. Leg lock here over the head there for Okada. But Bala flips his way out of it there. Nicely done. Good stalemate there from both men. On both occasions, really. Bala gets in an elbow on the back of the head. And here we go. Now things starting to pick themselves up a little bit. Spinning kick in the gut. Bala getting in some good strikes here. Okada stops him in his tracks, however. And he'll come back with some strikes of his own. Nice uppercut. Up and over the top rope here. Not a place that Bala wants to be this early on. Counters the attempted strike to the outside. Springboard back in. Okada had it well scouted. And way too early on there maybe to be looking for a move like that. Okada getting out of the way. And just standing there. Nice respect shown from Okada in all fairness. Just waiting for Bala to get back up to his feet. And continuing on from there really. Oh, and shot now from Okada as Bala counters him right there and then comes back with a forearm of his own. These two guys certainly breaking out the strikes early on thus far. Not looking for the heavy hitting moves just yet. Okada though with a nice European uppercut. The cover is made as he looks to retain that title early. The cover only gets him one. The kick in the back follows up there as well by the Rainmaker. But Bala able to effectively shrug it off from behind. Tiger suplex there. Cover made as he put him away. Two counts. Oh, I'm shot there now from Bala. As things are turning around here in the favor of the challenge and not quite. Okada counters. German suplex incoming. No. Bala sticks the landing. And a great landing to stick as well. Knife edge shot now. Here comes Bala. Basement drop kick on Okada. Seamless, fluid, and easy as always. So Bala makes it look. And a shining wizard will follow up there from Bala as well. Oh, that one flushing Okada. His boot right in the chest as well. Maybe even the head of Okada. I'm not too certain about where the angle was on that one. What I do know is that a counter is made there by Okada. Thrust kick into the gut. Bala unable to capitalize right away and the momentum swinging back in the favor of the Rainmaker once again look out Wong Pong DDT there once again he makes it look so seamless covers made kick out at two kind of wishing that it could have been three but it wasn't to be the case nice four shot in the face right then and there Okada Irish whip I've been planning a drop kick for a second there too close anyway, and Bala came up with the counter for whatever it was up on the shoulders here. Fireman's carry. Pele kick from the challenger. Okada taking off his feet right then and there, and Bala may well have a great opportunity in front of him to take charge here. Oh, Fujiwara on bar Okada, deathly close to the ropes, could just stretch that leg of his over a little bit, but instead, he'll just break his way out. Easy does it, big back elbow, and Okada takes Bala off his feet once again. Momentum swinging back and forth, but yet to really see a high impact move from either side here. In the corner now, corner trap, punches coming in from Bala. See these a few times thus far tonight and we're gonna see them some more. Bala getting in a good few of them until Okada pushes him away. Irish whip up and over the top rope goes Balor again and again he comes up with a counter this time he'll take things to the top rope Balor in position Harakarana takes Okada down hooks both legs to win the title right now oh that was late oh what a late two count that one was DDT no can't capitalize Okada had it scouted and greatly scouted as well from the champion Irish whip off the ropes. Oh, went for the drop kick, but had to take a step back before he could look for it. And that really was his undermining problem there. Drop kick. Scratch that. He got all of that one. Cover made him. Bala kicks out right away. And Carter has him down to the mat here and is just pummeling away now on to Finn Bala. Hard forearm shot. Counter is made by Bala there. Spinning kick in the gut connects as well. Look out here. But face lock, face first into the mat to go along with it. Bala going to the top rope. Is he thinking coup de grace this early on? I doubt it. No, he's not. He planned for an elbow drop. And Bala moved out. And Okada moved out of the way there. Okada in. Another German suplex attempt gets stuffed. And sling blade. There's your first big impact move of the match if you had to ask me. Okada 
Rolling to the outside, trying to recover for a moment, trying to catch his breath here from Bala. But Bala giving him no such chance. The leader of Bala Club takes flight to the outside. No rest for the champion. Here comes Bala. Big missile drop kick in from the springboard there. Cover is made. Do we have a new WWE Champion after what we just saw? It's a kick out of two. Great combination for Bala, however. Really putting. Okada in a bit of trouble and so too might this. Bloody Sunday, bloody no. Bloody Sunday is countered by Okada. And a necessary counter at that as well from the champion. Sends Bala in the corner. Back elbow, no one home. Bala moves out of the way. And this time he gets all of that DDT. Look out here, however. Top rope for Finn Balor. He's thinking it. He's looking for it. Coup de Gras. Oh, no one home. Oh, Carter moving out. At basically the best possible time any later, and he would have been done for. Any earlier, and Balor may have been able to read it. Oh, Carter now. Oh, look at the disrespect from the Rainmaker. Smacking Balor in the face as if to say, come on. Give me a fight. Look out now. Bala, oh, hangs onto the second rope. Drop kick. Springboard drop kick as well. And Okada, as if to say, there's plenty more where that came from. Back to the outside, these two men go. You wouldn't surprise me if they barely use the outside. And they don't. Okada just sending them right back in the ring there. Love the respect from the Rainmaker in that moment. Go for the chin lock now on Finn Balor, just wearing down the head and the neck for the Rainmaker, of course. Okada has it, having it locked in here. Balor in a bit of trouble. No way he can get to the ropes. Going to have to fight out of it himself. And he'll do just that. Both men back up to a vertical basis. Sling blade. Balor got all of that one. Top rope. Elbow across the face as well from Balor. That Balor feeling fired up right now. May have found a second win within him. May have found another edge to him here. Then he comes with the four up shots now. Okada in trouble. Sling blade again. And Bala feeling poised to take advantage to his fullest extent here. He will line it up right here, right now. In the corner, he lines it. Huge shotgun drop kick. Recoiling Okada into the turnbuckle. Bala has all the pieces, but one final piece to the puzzle is needed. Coup de gras from Bala. Leg is hooked. One, two. Oh, God, it kicks out. Of course he does. Of course he does. Bala, what I hoped and prayed that that was it, but it wasn't. Because this is Okada you're up against, not just any old schmuck. Okada set to the outside, incoming! And no doubt about it, Miami is right, what a matchup this has been. And Bala covers again, looking to put the match away here. Is it going to be title? No! Okada rallied the troops at NXT take over respect last night. But now he needs to rally himself here if he wants to leave as the champion. He needs to find what makes him one of the greatest right now in order to leave with that title. Death Valley driver covers made in the, the shoulder is up at one. And a varying degree of shock and disbelief. But here we go. Looking for it. No. Went for the Rainmaker. He wasn't letting him grab his wrist. Psycho suplex there. If Bala had grabbed, if Okada had got Bala's wrist, there would have been all over. Great counter by Bala at an absolutely necessary point in the corner. Here we go again. Okada in trouble. Basement dropkick comes in again in his head. And Okada is in big trouble. Maybe I spoke too soon. Okada seems actually quite fine. Comes in with forearm shots now. Smacks him in the face again. You can see just how much that is taken out of Bala. Those smacks are really slow to retaliate and just taking a number of steps back. Neither guy, though. 
seeming like they want to give in right now, but I'd argue that Bal has done just a little bit more in this matchup than Okada to maybe have this match coming his way. Look out though, Okada hanging on to the waist yet of Finn Balor and a trio of German suplexes will come down on him. Okada will hook the leg. He will look to pull away Finn Balor. No! Oh, to Brock Lesnar with his own variation of a trip to Suplex City. But Balor wasn't all that pleasing of the visit. He made the count and made the kick out there when he was needed the most. Snap me from Okada. Basement drop kick of his own. Anything you can do, I can do better. Look out now, Balor trying to recover on the outside. Okada, double axe handle down. Nothing flashy, just effective. That's what Okada prides himself on. Uh-oh, on the shoulders. Look out, no. Great counter for Balor. Wiggles himself off on the fireman's carry position. And now he has Balor on his, he has Okada on his shoulders and Snake Eyes in, into that announced table there. Big heavy hit for the champ to endure, and Balor sends him back in the ring. Is this Balor's calling? Discus forearm takes care of business right there and then. And now, oh! Driving the knees of Okada into the mat there was Finn Balor. Forearm shot, it's counted. What a contest this has been. Neither man has really been able to dominate the match. The pendulum has swung back and forth. Drop kick. It has just gone from one side to the other. Back and forth they've gone. Neither side has been able to control the other here. And that is what has made this such a thrilling WWE Championship match. And what makes Okada's reign as champion so thrilling as well. What a basement drop kick from Okada there. Right on Bala. Middle of the ring now. What does Okada have in mind here? Tombstone maybe. Oh no, 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 no. The count is made. Tombstone. Tombstone. From Bala. He'll go up high. Does he see it again? Oh no, he's calling him to his feet instead. He's calling him up. Bala to take flight. Oh, went for the Hurricanrana. Instead, he eats a power bomb from Okada. Not letting it happen to him twice. Okada had it red. And another basement drop kick from the Rainmaker. I said these matches can devolve into a sprint to the finish. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And the finish might be right now. Bloody Sunday. Bloody Sunday from Bala. Is that his third world title? He hooks the leg. One, two, three. Oh, it's not quite. It is not quite. Bala can't believe it. But Okada is hanging on in there. He's going to look for the coup de grace. If he hits it, it's over. Oh, Okada stuck the landing. Okada was, got, was way out of dodge. And Bala's in big trouble. Tombstone, Rainmaker pose. It can only mean one thing. The beginning of the end. German suplex. Rainmaker. Got him. Bala, just another name on a list that gets longer and longer. Okada retains in a fantastic title matchup. Still your WWE Champion. The Rainmaker stands tall. Bala gave it his all. One coup de grace shy. But you can never ever count out the Rainmaker. Okada does it again here at No Way Out. He is victorious. He is still your WWE Champion. And hang on a minute. He has put the title down for a second. And Okada once again here taking the microphone. Is this all a part of his surprise that he was on about? I'm excited.
Absolutely the right thing to do there. Congratulating Finn Balor on a, an excellent contest. But as he said, on SmackDown itself, it was that bad a surprise. Does he mean what I think he... Oh my God! Sign me up right now! Oh, Carter! has challenged Rollins for Survivor Series for a year we've asked and O'Connor wants to make it happen again what a bombshell announcement from O'Connor right there but ladies and gentlemen will it be a bombshell moment for Kyle O'Reilly will he leave no way out as the World Heavyweight Champion it's Kyle O'Reilly it's Roman Reigns it's up next Goosebumps, literal goosebumps from that. I'm gonna have trouble shaking that one out of my head right now. But I'm sure if there's anyone who's gonna be able to do it, it is gonna be this man, the plague. There is no way out to Kyle O'Reilly that has manifested within him since several years ago when Bobby Fish turned his back on him at this very arena to join himself with Paul Heyman. Two years later, two years ago, their paths crossed for the final time. It was O'Reilly versus Fish in their last ever match for the WWE title. And Fish won. Two years later, O'Reilly is here again. 0-2 in the building that has caused him nothing but heartbreak but turmoil, but regret. And O'Reilly has said it himself. This contest between him and Roman Reigns, it is a personal. He doesn't see it that way. How he does see it though, is a match that he needs to win. A match that he has to win. No way out in Kyle O'Reilly's mind shapes his legacy. And he has to break this curse tonight. But in all fairness, he couldn't have had a harder challenge and a harder task to try and break the curse against the seemingly unstoppable world heavyweight champion. He's been through Tanahashi. He's been through The Undertaker. And tonight, he looks to go through Kyle O'Reilly. Roman Reigns is in the building, and Miami does not like their home state boy one bit. Roman Reigns said he doesn't care about it being personal or not. On the last episode of Monday Night Raw, he tried to make it personal. He hit a spear on Kyle O'Reilly. And then later that night, O'Reilly came back and they started fighting. And just when it seemed like we were in for a great brawl between the pair of them, when it seemed like the tables could have been turning towards O'Reilly, Reigns scoffered. He got out of dodge. He cowered away. He grabbed his title and he walked out. But there's no running here tonight. There's no scoffering. The only way that Roman Reigns is going to look to leave with that world title is by victory. Because I will say, for as many underhanded actions as Roman Reigns has, for as far as he can get in terms of going under the radar into some scummy antics. There is no doubt about it either. When he gets in that ring, he is focused, he is hard-boiled, and he will never ever look for a cheap way to win. He just looks for the win. Kyle O'Reilly wants to make this happen. He wants, he's begging, he's craving for it to be the evening he leaves 
as World Heavyweight Champion. The evening he breaks his curse here at No Way Out. But Roman Reigns will do everything in his power to stop it. This man has the entirety of the arena behind him. This man has everyone gearing for him. People want to see him as champion once again. They want to see Kyle O'Reilly avenge all those defeats at No Way Out. All the heartbreak he has with Stud here. They want to see him topple Roman Reigns and go on to be the new World Heavyweight Champion. But if anyone could stop that from being the case, you're looking at him. And here we go. Main event of the evening. The final match for this series. For the World Heavyweight title. We are at Fever Pitch here tonight. Kyle O'Reilly. Roman Reigns. The World Heavyweight title. And we are underway. And here we go. O'Reilly coming out of the gate. Straight for Reigns. But he gets counter with a kick in the gut. And look at this. Reigns trying to act cocky as soon as possible. Turns right back towards O'Reilly. Who didn't batter an eyelid. He'll go again. But Reigns will counter him again with a big right hand. Oh, you're not going to get in the rest of that one. Kyle O'Reilly this time isn't going to let... Reigns grandstand, but again a kick in the leg, and Reigns is just to say, hit harder, hit harder. You want to take this title from me, then try. And Kyle O'Reilly certainly trying to do that, but Reigns stopping him. Oh, and a nasty throat chop there. And now, an elbow in the back of the head, and O'Reilly's taken off his feet. That was what Roman Reigns wanted to prove. Reigns knocking O'Reilly off his feet early, but O'Reilly coming back with these hard strikes of his again. He beats Cesaro to become the number one contender. Back at no mercy, and he'll look to beat Roman Reigns here tonight to break this curse, to put it all out to pasture. To harken in a moment that could rival Johnny Gargano at SummerSlam. Not a moment where he topples a Leviathan on top of a brand, but a moment for his own cause, for his own sake. Not a moment to rejoice for a brand as a whole, but a moment to rejoice for Kyle O'Reilly. But he has to do everything in his power to make it happen, because Roman Reigns since WrestleMania has been a man on a mission. Massive Tiger suplex there from O'Reilly and a crank of the neck as if to say, we are going to fight here tonight. We are going to war. Oh, big high kick there from O'Reilly. Takes Reigns off his feet. The strikes are coming in right now. Thick and fast here from, from O'Reilly. Reigns, though, quick to counter them. And this time ditching all the confidence. Ditching all of his mannerisms. Well, for a few moments, it seems until he gets onto the apron. O'Reilly counters though, big form in the face, not gonna try anything flashy, just back in the ring. Look at this, hammerlock, cradle suplex from O'Reilly. What a move it is, broke it out of no mercy. Breaks it out again here tonight. Is it gonna break the curse? Not quite, kick out of two. A little shot in the face there from O'Reilly. What's going to happen here? He'll send Roman Reigns into the turnbuckle. It's O'Reilly and Reigns going back and forth thus far. Has to be said. Look out. Big counter made there. Big forearm shot made. And the smack's coming in again here. And look out. Oh, went for a big splash again. Every time he goes for that splash, no one's home. And this time, Roman Reigns get that cut wrench suplex at the second time of asking. Covers made. The shoulders up though. O'Reilly in trouble now as he's the one sent into the turnbuckle by Roman Reigns. But quick to counter with a big boot right in the face. Look out here, O'Reilly. Neck breaker down on Reigns. And you hear the response for each guy changing every time they hit a move on the other. When Reigns hits a move, the crowd immediately starts to boo. When O'Reilly gets an offense, the crowd is out up at the 
out of their seats and cheering the man on. No one home there. And Reigns now can turn things around again. I wonder how many people are watching on. And I wonder, they're in the same building for the first time in a long time. Is Bobby Fish watching what he's seeing in the ring right now? Just speculation is all. Is it the case? Michinoku driver there and only gets the count of one, however. Great speculation to make, but uh, whether or not that's the case, we'll just have to guess. Pretty much, but right now we are focusing on this matchup here. Back to the contest at hand. Samoan drop, but no one there. O'Reilly getting right back into the swing of things with a massive big boot to take Reigns off his feet. Reigns trying to roll to the outside there, and O'Reilly saying, nah, -uh, you are getting no breathing room in this matchup. Going right after him and snapping that arm back. And that is smart from O'Reilly. You do not want to give the champion an inch to breathe. You want to go after him, and you want to make sure that there's no chance that Reigns can get out of the ring, can recover, can try and use the outside to his advantage. you got to go after him from bell to bell if you want to beat him. Look at this now. Using the ropes to lock in that armbar, stretching it as much as possible. Back in the ring we go here. And O'Reilly goes right back to work. What a forearm. What a strike combination as well. Covers made. Kick out of two. Shoulder raised in time there by the champion. And O'Reilly wishing, wishing, begging. But it wasn't. Look out here though. O'Reilly with a myriad of strikes and kicks and knees to take him off his feet. Nicely thought up there by the challenger. And again, he'll go to his submission game. Sitting down on one arm, stretching the other one back. Great submission hold here by Kyle O'Reilly. Has it got enough in it to wear down Reigns to make the champion tap out? He's just too far away from the ropes to make anything happen. Oh, but Reigns slips his way out there. Back up to a vertical basis. White hands coming in now. And it's Reigns who is turning things around. Only briefly though, O'Reilly comes up the counter. Look at these kicks in the chest now. O'Reilly kicking away. And continuing with the legs here. Scraping his boot across the face. Full head of steam. Running big boot in the corner. Doesn't go for the cover, however. Oh, that's why. Knees him right in the face. Now he'll go for the cover. O'Reilly has him in. Oh, two can. He's still not hooking the leg, though. O'Reilly's still not hooking the leg. And that may be what makes the difference. That may be what makes the, the kickouts even easier for Reigns. If he has the leg hooked, Reigns has to exert even more energy. Oh, massive lariat. And Reigns has him on the shoulders. Once again, the Samoan drop will connect. How much wind does that take out of you? How much fight does that take out of you? And O'Reilly simply doesn't care because he's right back to fighting right away. Big time neck breaker comes in. Riley has it set up now, has the arms wrenched in here, yanking on him here, European clutch, and he'll roll over into a cover, trying to do anything possible to win the world title. Oh, the kick out's made by Reigns. O'Reilly certainly thinking on his feet though, trying to think of anything possible to make it happen. What a right hand there from the champion. Deck the challenger with it, look out now. Easy amateur wrestling takedown there from Roman Reigns. And now stamping on his face as well. Back in control is the champion here. In the corner we go. Look out. For the challenger's sake. Tornado DDT from Roman Reigns. He is just taking apart the competition right now. O'Reilly is in big trouble. Momentum has very quickly swung to the champion, but O'Reilly's not going to give in, not a chance, not a hope that he would quit right there and then, smacking away now, O'Reilly kicking, hitting, striking, Reigns though, countering, oh this is uh, not a good place to be at all, oh nice counter made there by O'Reilly, kicks him in the chest, look out, Hurricanrana, covers made, will it be enough? Oh, it was so close again. 
Second time a Hurricane has almost resulted in a new champion here tonight. O'Reilly catches the armor, reigns. Armbar, armbar. He's got it locked in tight. He's crossed the legs over as well. Cross armbar's locked in. Will he have enough here to finish him off? Will he be able to do it? Reigns. He can't get to the ropes. But is he going to have to tap out here? O'Reilly is yanking on it. This crowd is hopeful that this will be enough, but no. Reigns doesn't even punch his way out. He just forces his way out of that hold. And then slams O'Reilly down at epic angles and epic proportions. O'Reilly in big trouble. Reigns in the turnbuckle. Looking for the spear. Looking for the spear. No one home. O'Reilly not allowing strangers into his house. And he comes up with a massive counter. And snap Miz it back into the ring for good measure as well. Went for the super kick. Counter is made right there and then. Electric chair incoming. Big trouble. Oh, what a counter from O'Reilly. Great stuff there. And are you. Oh, what a big boot. What a huge big boot takes Reigns to the outside. And O'Reilly again. Sees the chance. Sees the chance. Sees the opening. Back in the ring we go. Quite surprisingly, he decided to go right back in the ring, but maybe he sees something that the rest of us don't. Oh, well, he does see is a, a fist from Roman Reigns, hitting him in the face. Not once, but twice. But O'Reilly ain't coming off his feet. He's standing up. He's still trading. Reigns, massive clothesline, spills him to the outside. Oh, my goodness, no. Roman Reigns, look out! This whole evening has been awesome. But which one of these two men is about to leave as the World Heavyweight Champion? Face first into the barricade there. Snake Eyes from Reigns. Back in the ring we go. But is it all she wrote here? Reigns seems to think that business hasn't quite finished yet. He wants to make this curse even worse for Kyle O'Reilly. Superman clothesline from Reigns. To the turnbuckle he goes. Loading up. Cocking the shot. Superman punch. This is going to do it, isn't it? Is this really going to be it? The worst case scenario for Kyle O'Reilly. Spear from Reigns. And the life gets sucked out here in Miami. One, two, yes! Kyle O'Reilly gets the shoulder up in time. He isn't done yet. He is not finished just yet. He is still going. And Roman Reigns hates every minute of it. It should have been over by now. He should still be the world champion. But Kyle O'Reilly will do everything in his power to break this curse. He will go to depths that he didn't think were possible to hang on in there. In the corner, O'Reilly, he's still, he's still alive. He's not out on his feet. He's still fighting and he's still kicking. The challenge is still going. He said he couldn't give up, but he meant it. Guillotine leg drop over that bottom rope. And speaking of guillotines, speaking of guillotines, this is the one. He wrenches it. Guillotine choke locked it all. The ring savvy of Reigns there locked his arm around that bottom rope to get free. Kyle O'Reilly could have had it right then and there. Massive discus forearm. You could hear the thud throughout the arena. O'Reilly, he's going. He's doing it. He is making the dream happen. He is doing everything to break the curse. But Reigns is still in his way. Reigns still hasn't faltered. Oh, and he's trying to pick him up here. Yeah, not happening. Roman Reigns sandbagging his weight. Michinoku driver into the mat there. And Reigns now. Big right hand on O'Reilly. And he's going to go to the top rope here. Reigns going to look to fly. But O'Reilly shrugging off that right hand. And throwing Reigns off the top turnbuckle. 
He's going up there himself. O'Reilly up high. Elbow drop from O'Reilly. Come on. Come on, O'Reilly. You know you can do it. Miami is behind you. Everyone watching at home is behind you. Will he make it happen? Tiger suplex the rings, but the exhaustion of this match is setting in. He crawls to his feet. He crawls to life. Because he hasn't faded. Kick in the gut. Yes, yes. Chase the dragon. O'Reilly's going to do it. O'Reilly's going to do it. To the corner. He's going to do it. He's calling him to his feet. What the hell? What the hell is going on? O'Reilly was just about to be world champion. The lights have gone out the arena. What in... Oh my God! What? What is Walter doing here? O'Reilly was about to be world champion! And I can't believe what I'm even seeing! And neither can Kyle O'Reilly! And neither can this crowd! Walter's getting in the ring! And O'Reilly's standing there to face him! This was supposed to be Kyle O'Reilly's moment! And he's taking it out! Walter and O'Reilly are fighting! Reigns is nowhere to be seen, but what the hell is the ring general doing? No! No! Walter, no! Power bar to O'Reilly! Oh my god! Oh my god, no! He hasn't finished with him! He hasn't finished with him! Walter has O'Reilly! Not this! Power bar to the outside! Oh my god! But here comes Reigns, Reigns in from behind, on, the, on Walter, and swinging at him, they aren't on the same side either. But Walter just took the head off that champion with a massive lariat. Kyle O'Reilly was seconds away from being world champion, but it's not O'Reilly who's on top, it's not Roman Reigns, it is Ringkampf, it is Walter.